This is our Draper 35 foot wide John Deere Draper platform. And this is our Gandhi air seeder. And this is one Gandhi made to go on heads. So it's electrically driven. So these paddles here spit out the seed electrically. So it's always at the same rate. So if you come to a real rough spot, you slow down and it'll put on more seed. But also if it gets if you start out cutting beans at two and a half mile an hour and end up at four mile an hour, you can slow it down or speed it up on a little wheel over there. And then right here is the venturis that pick up the seed. So this is hydraulically driven by a blower that's mounted up here. And so the seed runs out out of here and it hits right here and splays it out in a perfect umbrella. So on this spacing, you have perfect umbrella of seed. So that's one of the beauties of putting it on with the head is that you get this stand that looks more like grass in your yard than rows of cover crop. And so your stand is always very uniform, which allows you to pull back, pull back, and I'm doing it again this year, pulling back the seeding rate because it is so accurate of putting it on that it's more, it covers the ground completely. And this is our new head mover we've put on here. And I want to come over here. This is the blower. So this is the hydraulically driven blower. This is a little bit of a problem because you have a blower on this one and that one down there. And you got to keep up that hydraulic power. So there's not a port for that. So we're plugging into the hydraulics of the head and we're stealing oil away from the reel. And that's the only way we figured out to do it. Now, some of the new ones are electrically driven blowers and this, which gets away from that problem. But this is hydraulically driven. And one of the unique things about a draper head is that we discovered that when they're doing flax or some of the other crops, they run this drum hydraulically instead of off of a PTO drive. So that meant there was a hydraulic system in place to run this. So we stole that and plumbed it so that the hydraulic oil runs in a circle. So both blowers are running in a circle off of one port on the platform. So that made it very nice. We talked about speeding it up and slowing it down that's what this little spinner is here. So we ended up with two Gandys when we put a Stalford uh, cedar on our corn head. So we're now running one on one side, one on the other. Now on the uh, McDonald's, it's more difficult. What we did on the McDonald is placed it right here and the McDon floats out there. So we had to make it so that head could go up and down like this or that cedar. And so that was a little more complex way of mounting it, but it worked. But McDon, the only place it's feeling the ground is right in here. On a McDon, it's spring loaded, so you can't put a box out on the side. Where on a John Deere, it's got feelers under there that's feeling the ground, so it doesn't matter that you got extra weight here. It's judging the height off of the ground so that there's more weight over here has no impact on the head running smoothly on the ground. So this is my system using two Gandhi air seeders. Each one of them is about 10 square feet of seed. So I can get 35 to 40 acres on this one. One of the advantages of not having it back on the combine and having it out on the head is like you set the head down and slide under the hose off of your tender. You slide up under it. They just flip the box open, hit the button. It fills this up in like two minutes. And then we, I move the combine over and then we fill that one up in about two minutes. And they just flip the door open. I'm right under it. Hit the button. They just make the hose go back and forth. Shut the button off close the lid and off I go. So here is another thing that you'll have to consider when doing this. So you see they got some extra hoses here and so forth. When you're throwing it off the back, this 
piece, the feeder house, you can't throw it off the back because this is the throat of your feeder house. So what we do is we get back here on the frame of the combine and put three of them right here on the axle frame, blowing it forward. So this part of it, it blows it forward under the throat, the rest of them blow it backwards. So we're uniformly getting it on, but you do have to attach three hoses to your platform off the, that go back under the feeder house. So that is something that people go, well, how do you do it where the feeder house is if you're throwing it off the back? You gotta have three of them here throwing it forward as you're going forward and then of course the chopper. And one of the most important parts of doing this is the uniform spreading of residue. So you need, this is a 35 footer in our 770 combine. It's got the power and the chopper to spread it out equally. And it always should happen to every farm, but in this case, 35 with a 770, it uniformly spreads the fodder over the top of the seed. Anytime you have a gap out there where it's not covered in your bean field, there's a bunch of nutrients that aren't going to be delivered to that part of the swath because you're not getting that valuable nutrient-rich residue back onto that part of the ground. So this is how we're using air seeders on a John Deere draper. It works fabulous. Everyone should have an air seeder either on their combine or on their heads. It works great. Stops you from having to drill, use an airplane. It's free because as you're going across the field, you're using up the diesel, you're using up the tires, you're using up everything that are needed to seed. You're doing it in one pass. So when you leave the field, you go, I got my cover crop done. And then you wake up at five in the morning and it's drizzling rain and you go, great. I got all my cover crop moisturized, so it's all going to come up. Or if you have a field, and we do it all the time, where it's rain two inches, as soon as these soybeans are dry enough to cut, we go right back in the field. With no-till building structure and with cover crops on top, when the cut crop is ready to cut, we don't worry about how much rain we've had, because we can go right across the top of the fields without impacting those fields. So in that case, you couldn't drill. You wouldn't be able to drill into the ground. So we're getting our cover crop on when the ground's wet and we're giving our cover crop on instead of people going, well, I didn't get it all done because it started raining. Well, when it starts raining on us, it's just making the cover crop grow faster and faster. So a huge advantage of putting them on as you're harvesting. Now I realize as you go further north, that could be more difficult but I'm telling you here in the Southern Corn Belt, I mean, it's 90 degrees today in September. It's hot in the fall and those cover crops grow and grow and grow and grow. And sometimes two out of the last three years, they didn't even go dormant. They kept growing throughout the winter and then come February, they're growing fast. So you've really got a really wide window of opportunity here in the Southern Corn Belt to make cover crops really work for you. People are jealous because we have fabulous soils, fabulous markets, but we also have this long falls and long springs where it's warm out and moist and we get to utilize cover crops to sequester carbon, to go down and get nutrients, to build soil structure. All of the 25 things that cover crops can do, they do it better down here in the Southern Corn Belt. So anybody south of 70 ought to have an air seeder on their combine.